Hi, everyone. Very warm welcome to Keynotes podcast. My name is Pali, and I'm the host today. Uh, today, we have a very interesting topic called finding balance. And we know that there's a lot of changes that's happening. Many of us are now starting to work in the office. That's the great resonation. And a lot of people are struggling with finding balance and trying to find that right pace, finding some peace in their lives. And today I'm very honored to have Anupama join me today. So just before I introduce Anupama, I'll do a short introduction of myself. So I'm a registered psychologist, coach, specialized in well-being at work. And let me do a short introduction of Anu as well. So Anupama, she got very curious about an inside out approach, which she'll be sharing with us today. When she recognized that she was more relaxed and dynamic when she was in her equilibrium, a state of mental and emotional well being. And her mission today is to empower people to find that equilibrium to be their best. Now, Anu has over 15 years of experience working in several countries, including Singapore, and in different roles, Anu is able to bring her practical, real-world experience in coaching, mentoring, and speaking. So with this, I'm very honored to bring in Anu today. So thank you, Anu, for joining me. Thank you, Bali. You're looking lovely, and I'm really looking forward to today's conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so Anu, maybe we, what we can do is maybe share with us and start off with us, what was your journey towards finding equilibrium? Where did you get started or what was your turning point? So I'll go directly to the turning point, right? Having an experience like I was on a roller coaster, that was my turning point. And here I'm talking about emotions, uh, feeling good and feeling inspired and then not having energy at all by end of the day. So having a high moment and then feeling exhausted or even the other way around, starting the day feeling exhausted, but still having moments of feeling inspired. So I really got curious, how is it that sometimes I feel this way and sometimes I don't? And I really wanted to find the answer to getting over this roller coaster and feeling more stable and being able to bring myself fully to whatever I was doing. So at the outset, Bali, I remember even now when I connect with my colleagues and I share the story with them, they say, really, uh, we had no clue you were experiencing this because we're going through the work day, um, you know, really quite uh, naturally just going into meetings, coming out of meetings, having client conversations, writing proposals, all that is going on. And even you're, you're even having conversations with your colleagues during the day. And then you finish your day, go back home and next day you're back at work. This is happening to all of us. So sometimes we're missing that people are going through other experiences internally. So whenever I share with my colleagues, they're very surprised. And the reason I mentioned this is we really don't know what is happening internally. And I think I really zoomed into that to find out, hey, I must have a way out of this. If yeah. there's a way out, then I have to first look inward. Yeah. 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 So, so share with us, you, know, you mentioned that, was there a specific moment when you recognized, so you said that your colleagues, you, you know, didn't recognize that, but you felt a certain way. Was there a point where you recognized that? What, what had triggered you to recognize it? What, what was the, the moment for you? Did, did you have any specific moment? So instead of looking at a specific moment, I think it happened over time, Bali. Really, for me to, first I made sense of it by telling myself that it's okay. Life is so busy. It's okay yeah. to have these moments. And you have to have these ups and downs in the day. And that's how it is. So I convinced myself saying, that's what is happening around me. It's very normal. That yeah. didn't really resonate. I had to overcome that. And then come into a space of, okay, I can still have moments of feeling relaxed. Let me find a way to have that work-life balance where I'm having those really intense moments and then I have pause and that's when, that's when I relax and then I go back to being busy and, you know, crazy again. Even yes. Work. Then I yes. had to find a way to say, okay, no, this, both these, these things are not working. So I had to go from accepting the way I was functioning to a sort of non-acceptance and say, this is not okay. I have to yes. change it. I think the third phase was really coming to saying that how can I continuously work on this to see how I can be in that mental and emotional state of balance, which brings myself fully to whatever I do. So it was a phase, I would say three phases 
of going yes. through. Yes. And from what you're saying, you know, finding, you know, throughout the day, having that ups and downs, that sounds to me like most people's day, right? Like that, that sounds to me like my day sometimes as well. So share with us, what is this concept of equilibrium? Would you say that it's more of finding, um, it's a kind of balance where you then feel that you, you have more, more peace, you have this sense of groundedness, uh, or share with us, what is possible from finding this equilibrium? What was, yeah, sh share with us a little bit more about that. So I'll, I'll, I'll introduce two words here and they are words that we can understand easily. So equilibrium really moves us, shifts us from being reactive to being intentional. All of us have goals and uh, we want to go towards those goals and achieve them. But mm -hmm. what about the journey to the goal? There are going to be blocks, there are going to be barriers, there is going to be criticism, there are going to be high days, low days. Yeah. And how do we really enjoy the journey to the destination? So equilibrium is that state which allows me to go from being reactive to be intentional. Right. So anytime I you know, encounter a certain situation or people who are you know, affecting me, and I'm not saying they're wrong, they are affecting me, then I really look into saying, okay, what is happening here? And how can I come back to a state where I can apply myself fully again? So it goes from reactive to intentional and that intentional way of living has no limit. I think it's limitless in terms of what you can achieve. Right. So really looking within yourself to identify um, when are the moments which triggers you, maybe not in a, in a great way. And then how do you bring yourself back to this state of balance and this state of equilibrium? Yes, Bali. And I like the choice of words. Like, how do you, uh, you know, you get more curious about those triggers and not just avoiding those triggers, but really, uh, you know, blazing through those triggers and understanding the trigger much more. So anytime, you know, equilibrium will keep getting shifted, right? Because things are happening around us. Situations are happening around us. People are changing. New people are coming. So it will yeah. keep happening that you'll be off your center, off your equilibrium. But then having the curiosity say, hey, what just happened here? I was yeah. functioning perfectly fine and something just took me off my center. And then, you know, being curious about that and correct, doing some course correction, some reflection allows us to then come back to that state, say, okay, I've learned something. So I would say two things happen in that process. We realize what makes us and also what shakes us. So yeah. you can adjust accordingly. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask you something a little bit personal here, awesome. but did you have something that you felt that was a trigger for you that, you know, through the process of you working on some of these things that you were able to overcome it, would you be able to share with us something which was a trigger and then you were able to find that equilibrium and come back to that balance? Do you have an example maybe for yourself or for a client that you worked with? Yeah, so um, it keeps happening even now. So I'm not, you know, saying that, oh, I'm in this equilibrium state, all the Zen state all the time, right? Yeah. Um, so I would say that if you ask me that is there uh, something that happened for me, I think evidently I could see at work, and this was when I was working in London, that mm -hmm. I was feeling very exhausted. There was a sense of exhaustion and lack of enthusiasm. And that was something that, you know, the state of languishing, I would say, it's like, okay, I'm going through this because I have to. And that was a state I really wanted to get out of. So for me, it was that which got me into breath-based meditation because I was looking for an avenue to get out of that state of fatigue and exhaustion and lack yeah. of clarity. So when I uh, experienced that breath-based meditation, it gave me a lot of opportunity to really relax and understand myself. And that relaxation allowed me to go overcome a little bit of exhaustion and fatigue and have more clarity. But there had to be more work done because I had to really identify that it was only not during these meditation period that I will be, you know, I was only relaxed when I was meditating. But outside of the meditation, I was again getting triggered. So yeah. I was like wanting to see how I can keep this more and more. So for me, back to your question, it was that, you know, what are those signs? Constant fatigue. And lack of enthusiasm, lack of clarity, but then going through life as if there's no choice. For me, it was that, that roller coaster that I was experiencing. And going through a phase, uh, different phases allowed me to go deeper and deeper. So it was not at first one go, Bali, because I didn't even understand what I had to do to get out of what I was experiencing. So I allowed myself the freedom, I would say, if I look back at that time, it wasn't that way. It wasn't a conscious choice. But when I look back, it was 
I allowed myself time to, first of all, um, learn to meditate and do that properly because I was someone who could not sit. My yes. was constant chatter. So I had to first allow myself to become better at meditation, get better at meditation, then go into another phase to say, hey, this is also not enough. I need to do some more thinking here. Yeah, yeah. so that is it for me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think from what you're saying, one of the key things I'm hearing is really having that sense of awareness. That's really important. And then I think meditation is coming up. So I love meditation personally. <laughs> I think it changed my life completely as well. And I, I always suggest, you know, when people say, oh, I want to learn about mindfulness, I'm like, go learn meditation first, because once you learn meditation, you're, you're going to be mindful as well. So they just oh, both go that. hand in hand, right? So, but, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm diverging a little bit, but I do hear people sort of say, oh, I, I just can't meditate. So if, if in circumstances when people say that, oh, I just can't meditate or I can't do that, what, what would you then suggest for them to do? What could somebody in that position who feel that maybe they, they can't meditate? What would your advice be to, for, for someone in that situation? So I have been in that situation. And as I was saying that, you know, this chapter made me feel that, oh, I cannot do it. Until I understood that meditation is not absence of thoughts. It's just observation of thoughts, which is to say the thoughts will keep coming because it's also a form of release. And I close my eyes, all sorts of thoughts will come. Things that I never thought about will also spring up. But yeah. just observing, saying, oh, there you are, and just letting that thought go away. Because we are just giving that space, Bali. It's that creating that space within. Um, often we are just reacting. What is reaction? There is no space between the trigger and the response. Then that's where we react. Meditation allows us to create that space, which is by just allowing ourselves on a daily basis to just simply let go of this need to transact with every thought there's a yeah, transaction yeah. we are having with every thought but if Absolutely. we can observe to say it's okay it's fine i feel this way about this person and uh, this thought is coming about this person it's okay it's fine now right now i'm just going to observe it i have seen that the more and more i observe and i let it exist rather than resist the hold that it has on me keeps loosening and then I can say, okay, I'm not bothered anymore. I can just say, okay, I had this thought and I can just let it go. So I think is that tussle that we have with the thought saying, okay, how can I have thoughts when I'm meditating? Of course, you will have thoughts when you're meditating. But yeah. it's about just observing the thoughts. And meditation is about what you achieve, what happens to you after you meditate. It's not about what is happening during meditation. You will find that you're relaxed. You're much more clear as I'm sure you have experienced it. So just look at going through the process and look at what happens for you at the end of it. Don't judge the process. Yeah. Thank you. I like I like how you describe meditation. Exactly. It's it's not just about not having thoughts, right? It's it's being aware of what is going on. And not long ago, I was on a nine-day silent meditation retreat. It's it's not Vipassana. I always get asked this. It's not Vipassana. But I remember, I think it was around day six or day seven. So I had my phone off for, for, um, for six, seven days now. And one of the thoughts which came up was because my husband is home with my son. And I thought, what if something happened to both of them? I, and it just, it came up as a thought. And I thought, is that the intuition? And... I had to hold off from turning off my phone. And when I turned on my phone after the nine days, nothing happened. Everything was fine. So it's just amazing how our mind can construe a lot of things, fear, anxiety, that can even take us off balance. So I think, yeah, I do think that meditation is a good start as well. Um, and being more aware of your thoughts and having that sense of awareness, as you shared, is, is really key as well. Yes, absolutely. And I would like to take out one thing that you mentioned, right, that uh, fear and anxiety and worry takes us off balance. Exactly. And that's what that equilibrium is, that really looking deeper. It's not about what I'm doing in the day. It's not about strategies of how I can manage my day in the best possible way, having time for fitness, work, family and so on. It's about realigning myself to understand what works for me, what doesn't work for me, and then allowing myself to understand it firstly, and then slowly allowing others to also understand me so that we can then function as a unit better. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. What What I want to do now is maybe just also talk about, I guess, more giving our audience a little bit of a methodology or something which they can take away. So would the first thing to do would be to have an awareness when you're off balance. Would that be the first thing or what do you think would be the first thing that they need to do or be aware of? Absolutely. It starts with self-awareness. First of all, having awareness that you're not in balance and also understanding how you function when you are in that balanced state. Everyone of us has experienced it. And we know that when we are in that state, uh, we are more in the yes zone, we are more inspired and we understand the difference. So first is awareness that, oh, I'm not in that state that I desire to be in. And there, of course, has to be a desire to want to be in that state. Okay. The next step, Bali, is that willingness to do something. Can I you. just, um, Anu, I don't, I know, I want to hear your second stage, but just what could be some of the signs and symptoms that let someone know that they're off balance? Hmm. Very good question. So I will, you know, touch upon mental wellness here, which is your, uh, you know, expert topic. What is mental wellness? It's not just the absence of mental illness. It has so many aspects to it. Feeling good having deep connection with people, making a difference in the society, being more resilient, feeling cont contented and fulfilled. All these are part of mental wellness. So, um, you know, really asking yourself that, am I overwhelmed all the time? Am I finding that I have, um, I often find myself blaming others for my situation? Am I really fulfilled? So really asking these deeper questions and being okay to answer those questions from an inside out perspective saying, what is causing me to do this? So that self-awareness, deepening that self-awareness, not just really saying, okay, I'm not in balance, but really questioning saying, what aspect is it that is annoying me or bothering me right now? And yes. what can I do about it? Yes. And, and I'd like to really um, you know, offer this to the audience that this can be done only when we pause. Often we're not pausing and we're only pausing or rather like to rephrase, we only pause as a corrective action. Oh, I need to pause otherwise I can't function anymore. I need yeah. to do this because I'm not able to process anymore. How yeah. about changing that to say pause often to play better? Yes. Right? If I pause often, then I can play better. So I make it a part of my life. I make this pause or pause a part of my life because only when we go into slow thinking can we really be more self-aware. 100%. And I think that's a very, very important point, taking that moment to pause, taking that moment to really evaluate where you're at constantly, um, because sometimes, especially in Singapore, right, or in Asia, sometimes we can be in such a rushed lifestyle with one thing after another, you know, clients working really long hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, and taking that moment to pause and not waiting for something to trigger that pause, right? Sometimes we might yeah. wait for a disaster to happen or something to happens to someone's health and they go, okay, now I need to pause. But it's important, like you said, to find that, um, to actually start creating that moment of pauses for yourself. So I really like that. I like what you shared there. Yeah, so that's the first step. So thank you for deepening the self-awareness and the way forward is to really pause um, more often to play better and allowing yourself to ask yourself some questions so that you can understand it more, yeah. Okay, okay. And if someone is, um, if there is one thing <laughs> that you could advise someone or um, who says that, look, I have a really busy lifestyle and I'm working really long hours and I'm really struggling here, what can I do? Yeah. So I would really, uh, you know, tell them that uh, you must pause, definitely. I mean, for you, it is, <laughs> it's mandatory. For <laughs> sure. Very early on in my meditation journey, when I, uh, somebody asked this question uh, to the facilitator who was teaching us, sharing with us, the facilitator said it beautifully, okay, for most people, we just need to meditate once a day, but for you, it'll be twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> so really, to, I mean, um, if you're not even able to pause and reflect, then it really requires you to pause and say, why am I not able to pause? Yeah. Because there's no way you can function because the brain has its capacity and, um, and all, all the signs will be there. Like connection, for example, you may be in contact with people, but connection won't be there. You'll want to avoid some people. You'll not really, um, you know, things go wrong. You will not be able to bounce back. That is resilience. So these yeah. are the telltale signs. So before it gets to a point where you have to take time off and pause, make it yeah. a problem. 
yeah yeah okay okay i yeah i like that so it's like like you know i have this saying the busier you are the more you need to take care of yourself the more you need to invest more in in your time um people tend to think it's the opposite oh the busy i am so i put off meditating i put out exercise i put off something that i enjoy and in fact the busier you are the more you need to invest time into doing these things so that you can just really take good care of yourself and um, find that balance um I want to just okay. add one line to that time right because yeah. this is what i say uh this has been very powerful for me every time you give time to the mind the mind will give you back time through clarity stability and enthusiasm yeah, yeah. You're not really saving time by not giving time to the mind. It's just a myth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, just just want to ask you a question. I guess more again along the personal side. I think this might might relate to the audience. Have you ever experienced a time when you felt burnt out, or when you felt really exhausted, and um, what what do you think? Yeah, how, how did you know this and what helped you to overcome this? Oh, I um, it happens all the time. So like I was saying, it's not that I'm never in equilibrium, but because I value it, I make sure that I you know do whatever needs to be done in terms of pausing, reflecting and coming back to equilibrium. So just recently I had a situation where there was a change of hands. My helper had you know suddenly left with no notice. And yeah. My schedule is now completely packed and I have to also accommodate all these into my day. And we also plan to go to India at the same time. And I could see that I was really like um, in a state where I was getting frustrated and I was, you know, throwing things around at my family until, you know, I just paused for a second and say, what is happening here? Yeah. It's just that I'm feeling the overwhelm because I have said, oh, I have to do all this myself. Yeah. And that is why I'm feeling this. So then yeah. the, that pause allowed me to then communicate better. Just I just took a few breaths and I said, okay, this is what is happening with my spouse. I had a conversation. I said, these are the things now which have come into my space. And somehow I'm starting to think now I have no choice but to deal with all of them. But I know that we can deal with it better. Only that we need to see how we can manage this better together. So often what happens is we assume a certain situation. And when we don't pause, that situation appears to be real. I don't have a choice. This is how it is. But when you pause and take a few breaths in, it will shift. So I keep having these moments, Bali, and uh, not so frequently like I used to, and also not for a very long time. So the frequency and the duration of the event has come down because the moment I recognize it, I pause and say, okay, what do I need to do in order to shift back here? And most yeah. times it is just either communication. Most times it is just removing clutter. It's really simple, straightforward stuff. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. So I think you, you brought a really important point. It's really, I think it also ties in with sometimes how our mind tells us a lot of things and you there was this um, teaching once by a monk, which I heard uh, it's, they often say, uh, he, he shared that do it, doing it is easy, but thinking about it is hard. Mm. Yes. Yes. So well, sometimes that's where I think, you know, so it, sometimes it's, it's an overwhelming thought. It's, oh my gosh, how am I going to deal with this? But actually taking the steps to do it might or, or resolve the situation is actually not as hard as thinking about it and getting into the the, the thoughts around it yeah so i think the you know second step that uh, we were going into was that the willingness Bali, it's different from awareness i may be aware but am i willing to do something about it and that is where you need to like you know go from this like most times we are saying this situation this person makes me feel this way but willingness is about curling that finger towards you so that you can work on it and you can get through this. So that willingness takes a lot of uh, energy because firstly there's resistance. Oh, it's not me. Oh, it's too much work. Mm -hmm. But then you say, okay, where do I want to get to? It has mm -hmm. to be based on the desire we have to, we have for our own state of mind. And then you will be able to take the action. So awareness, willingness, and then action, I would say. Okay, I like that. True, that's a very clear um, three-step process. So, really having firstly the awareness, as you said, um, identifying where you feel off balance, what are the signs and symptoms, and also recognizing that everybody might have different 
reactions. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has to be for some period of time, as you were saying, it's not just like a one day off balance. It's really, it's really some period of time. And then the second step is oh, wait, so awareness. The first second. step is awareness. Awareness. Okay. Second. Not yourself, what is making you, shaking you, and then saying, okay, this is what is happening to me. But the willingness is like the willingness. Yes. The willingness is the part where you're identifying, okay, what am I willing to do about this situation? Yes. It's impacting me. And then whatever comes out of that, you can then act on it. And then making a shift with that action. Okay, brilliant. Well, I think that you have shared with us some such valuable insights and such valuable tips, which are going to help the audience with, especially when they're feeling off balance, um, what they can do, and especially applying this three-step process, which you shared um, as well. Um, I think it's going to be very valuable. But just before we wrap up, is there anything else that you feel um, you would, like to share or you think would be important for the audience to know when it comes to finding balance? Yes, absolutely. I would, um, you know, want to um, deepen this willingness for uh, the audience. So there's one thing about all of us beliefs, the beliefs that we have about ourselves is so deep rooted and we think that is what is true, right? So I feel this way because of this situation or this situation won't change. This is my belief. So for willingness to work, you have to change the belief. So anytime there's a conflict between your belief and your will, your belief will always win. So if you are not able to make a change saying that, hey, I'm aware of this, but then this is the reason. These are the reasons why I will not change. Then you may want to say, okay, what is my belief here? Because the belief is what is holding you back to make that change. So just the tip is whenever there's a conflict between your beliefs and your will, your beliefs will win. So look into what you believe in. That's a brilliant point. Thank you for sharing and ending off our session with that key point about belief and ensuring that your belief is aligned with your willingness. Otherwise, do have a look again at your beliefs. So thank you, Anu, for sharing such valuable tips today. Um, and as we're coming to the end of our session, I just want to share a little bit about Keynote. Um, so Keynote, we are a directory of women speakers, over 100 speakers, we're a nonprofit organization, really um, inspiring women who are coming together to help organizations to speak on various topics. So if you ever want to know a little bit more about Keynote, do go hop on to um, uh, our website, which is www.keynotewomen.com. And um, you can find out a lot more about our um, wonderful speakers from all walks of life. We're sharing such inspiration from different topics. So with that, thank you so much, Anu, and uh, wishing you. everyone a great day. I really enjoyed having this chat with you today. Thank you, Anu. 